Hello everybody, this is Al with Bobcat Cam, the software company, and today I wanted to take a look at our mill professional strategies uh, versus our multi-axis strategies for three-axis cutting. So in this example I have a um, kind of like with a P-trap or just a swept cut profile and uh, the first strategy we're going to look at is our advanced rough. This is a mill pro strategy and um, we're going to rough out the bulk of the material here. Now if you look at this there's some benefits to the way this strategy works. You can see that the tool will start off the part. It does start off the part but there are also some negatives. Uh, you can see that its first pass the tool is actually burying itself as it goes down the center uh, of this uh, profile that we're roughing out. Uh, we do have two directional cutting so it is climb and conventional. We could force it to do just climb if we wanted with single direction. Uh, you know, Basically this is an advanced uh, Z level rough and it's going to remove the bulk of our material uh, roughing out this cavity. And again there you can see it uh, the first pass that it makes from level to level it completely buries the tool and cuts right down the center. Now that is definitely uh, definitely not the best scenario in softer materials so you'll probably be alright but uh, you know having the tool getting buried uh, wouldn't be a benefit but having it start off the part automatically is a good benefit. Now when we look at the planar toolpath I'm using this as a semi rough routine where I'm going to come back and knock down the the walls or the the steps that were left there. Uh, the planar some of the negatives about it for this example is we have an inconsistent finish. You can see that the scallops are varying from one end to the other. The planer is an incremental step over. It doesn't step over exactly uh, to the surface so you will get uh, scallops as it moves back and forth. And also the other thing is we're just cutting on it on an angle. I think it's 90 degrees and it's just going back and forth. So uh, you know if we could be we might want a little more control over where it's cutting. Another thing to look at is the toolpath does roll over the top of the surface as a default it's going to look at the geometry you selected start on that edge with the tip of the cutter and roll over so uh, we may want to see some improvements there but one of the things that is nice about this strategy is you can post with a G18 or G19 arc so instead of all linear interpolated movement we actually be, can be swinging arcs there which, uh, which is good for other applications. Again uh, this is a good, uh, good way to come in here and semi rough but you can see a, a bunch of interrupt, interrupted cuts and uh, that's a topic we'll talk about here a little later with our intermediate slices. Now, now that we have the majority of the cavity uh, roughed out we're coming in with a Z level finish and the Z level finish is going to start with the tip of the tool as well so uh, uh, you know you could get some air cutting as it's moving down. The other thing that you're going to notice is that uh, it's an incremental step down. Again it's not stepping down to the surface so as the, the surface starts to flatten out on the bottom we would get much uh, uh, greater scallops. So using top and bottom a job I did limit where this toolpath would go so I said start at zero and stop cutting at a certain level. The other thing you'll notice is as it cuts from one side to the next its uh, boundary is the edge of the surface so the tip of the the tool will be on the edge of the surface and a lot of cases uh, when it comes to finishing you want the tool to start and finish off the part if could be. So again I used the Z level to catch the more vertical part of the, the walls here and uh, it did just step down. Now as I come in to clean up the bottom of this I did use the equidistant offset. Now even though the equidistant offset is a great finishing strategy there are some weaknesses to it and it's being illustrated right here. Uh, the equidistant offset is an offset style toolpath and for this particular geometry set uh, that toolpath is being trimmed and it's wrapping back and forth from one section of the part to the other section of the part. Uh, it is working from the top down and uh, you can see it's running perpendicular to the radius at this point and it has to rapid rapid reposition to the, to get to the other side because it's not following the curve of the surface it's just offsetting that curve. Now as it moves in from the ends when that offset starts connecting we'll see it working right through the center. 
a, a real big benefit of the equidistant, uh, even though they're showing some weaknesses here in this example, it is a, it is a uh, absolute step over, or you could say a scallop type toolpath. So it, st it does, it step over amount is to the surface area. So you do get very good clean finishes with it. Um, some of the other weaknesses in this particular example might be the change of direction. You can see as the toolpath goes from the outside to the inside, it does change direction quite a bit. So uh, we have some good aspects of this software, and I think it did a great job of roughing, semi-finishing, and finishing this part. But some of the things that you could struggle with is working with uh, harder materials and also your run times as well. Because of all the rapid repositions, uh, you would have a, a lengthier run time on on this particular job you know so uh, we do have a solution for you and and that's the next thing we're going to cover what we want to look at now is using our multi-axis strategies for three axis cutting now Bobcat does offer uh, uh, two through five axis programming but a lot of people don't understand that you can use the multi-axis strategies in three axis and they're extremely powerful and offer a lot more versatility and control over how your toolpath is generated now the first thing I'm going to do is look at our advanced rough. I'm using a, a different uh, option, uh, the adaptive option, uh, which is a mill pro strategy to rough this out and kind of illustrating the, the differences of our standard uh, advanced rough versus the adaptive rough. And you can see here that this is a completely different style uh, routine. It does start off the part. Uh, it's single direction cutting. It's uh, sweeping along with radiuses. I am doing twice diameter cutting to get down to the bottom. And this is uh, more so like a high speed type strategy. Now, you're going to notice that I have these really big staircases or, or steps of material left on the walls, kind of like what we had in the first example. And one of the options we have with the software is uh, intermediate uh, slices or intermediate steps. And what it will actually do after it gets down to the bottom is you can tell it how many times to re-rough the wall from the bottom up. And what this will do is eliminate those steps and prepare it uh, almost like a semi-finish routine. And uh, that helps with that intermediate cutting as well we go from our uh, our rough routine to our semi finished routine so again uh, just another spin on the advanced rough that is a three axis pro strategy uh, which if you haven't used it I do recommend that you uh, consider utilizing uh, the adaptive roughing to speed up your run times and cut a little more efficiently with your tooling now, uh, a after we've had this roughed out, instead of using a planar tool path, in this example, we're going to use a multi-axis strategy called cut along a curve. And what that allows us to do is select a drive surface, what it is that we want to cut, and then a curve in which we want the tool to follow. The tool path will be generated perpendicular to that curve. And as you can see, it's actually following this, uh, this, uh, uh, this profile. Uh, where the surface is working back and forth. This is uh, giving you much more control over the toolpath. Uh, a great strategy. You could use it in a variety of different scenarios. Uh, one of the other aspects of this strategy is it's going to um, it's not going to roll over the edge. It's going to stay below the, below the edge of the uh, surface automatically. That's how it's generated. You could extend it up or extend it down. Uh, lots of control over single direction, bi-directional. Um, lead in and lead out options. I mean, once you go multi-axis, you really have much more options as far as the way in which you can cut. But you can see this is, uh, you know, a, a different approach to semi-finishing the toolpath and really I'm illustrating the ability to control where the toolpath is going using cuts along a curve. Uh, the next thing that we look at is in the previous example, we used a um, Z level finish and then an equidistant. In this case, I'm using morph between two curves. So I selected the outside curve, the inside curve, and the drive surface. And I have a bunch of different options um, to control whether it starts from the center out or single direction cutting. But one of the things that I really like about it is it, it, it has an extend and trim feature. So you'll notice that at the ends of the part, the toolpath is actually extending past that. And I didn't have to edit any geometry to be able to do that. It does it automatically just by turning on that option and then defining um, how much you want it to step over or step away. Uh, in this example, using more between two curves, the toolpath is following the surface. It's following 
these curves and morphing between them so it stays in the cut the whole time. We don't have any rapid repositions. You can see that's a much more efficient strategy and would definitely give you a better finish on your part. So that's just a quick preview of some of the differences between our pro tool paths and our multi-axis tool paths. Uh, still to come yet is uh, lolly pop cutters, T cutters, dovetails, undercutting, uh, really expanding upon the control that you have for your more complicated 3D parts. Stay tuned.